This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX, from the Worldwide Radio Forum at www.worldwidedx.com. Today we're going to take a look at the MFJ Model 1026 Deluxe Noise Cancelling Signal Enhancer, which I have installed on my station right here. Uh, we're going to cover some of its principles of operation and how to actually use the unit uh, to get rid of some unwanted noise in your station. MFJ provided this unit to me for the purposes of this review and I'm enjoying it very much, so let's get started. As I mentioned, the purpose of the MFJ Model 1026 is to get rid of unwanted noise in your receiver. Um, unlike a noise reduction circuit or a noise blanker in a rig, this works a little bit differently and is based on different principles. You need two antennas for this uh, noise canceller. One is your main antenna that you'll use uh, you know, to receive and transmit on, and the other is a receive antenna. What the unit does is it combines the signals from both antennas and allows you to adjust the phase between the two, effectively canceling out the noise. And let me tell you, it really does work pretty good. Um, in the box, you get this uh, noise canceling unit itself, and it comes with uh, this little telescoping whip antenna um, which you can use as your receive antenna. It screws right in the top here. Uh, this thing's about two and a half feet long or so. Um, as is indicated in the instruction manual, unless your noise, so no noise source is extremely close, uh, within a room or two probably, this little receiving antenna isn't going to do much good. It is very strongly recommended that you hook up an external receive antenna of some kind. Um, I've done that using just a simple loop that I ran around my property. Uh, it's not very tall, it's about uh, 10, 12 feet, and it seems to work pretty good uh, for me. Uh, when you open up the unit, there's some very detailed and good instructions that tell you how to hook it up. It's important that you pay attention to those. Uh, this device has to go um, before, in between your receiver and any tuner. It can only handle about 100 watts of power through it, so you, you must not hook up an amplifier uh, before this unit. Um, your transceiver, then this unit, then any other equipment. Uh, there's some dip switches or jumpers rather inside the unit that you use to switch between whether you're using uh, the internal built-in antenna or external antenna. Um, it's very straightforward. The instruction manual is very clear on how to do that so I'm not going to spend a lot of time covering that. Uh, what I will do though is uh, give a demonstration on how this unit works and how you operate it. Before we talk about how to use the MFJ 1026 noise canceller, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the installation process. Uh, there are basically three methods you can use. Um, the, the first two methods involve hooking up a, a jumper between the transceiver's antenna output into this and then out from this to the antenna system. Um, the first way when you're doing that is to let uh, this device control transmit and receive uh, triggering and it'll sense that with its own circuit and you can adjust the transmit receive delay here to adjust um, you know, the, the relay engage and disengage time to, to suit your needs. Uh, it is strongly recommended by MFJ that you don't use this method even though it, it is supplied. Um, that's because certain circuits can send spikes on transmit or rather certain transceivers uh, send a spike on transmit that can damage the unit. Um, the suggested way of handling transmit and receive, if you're going to hook up the coax out from your transceiver into here, is to use some kind of uh, relay cable, either from out from your transceiver into here, um, just like you would do for a linear amplifier, uh, or you can use a foot switch or something like that hooked up to the back, which would handle just fine. The other way you can hook this up, which is the way I'm doing it, is if you're receiver has some type of preamp circuit that you can switch in and out of line, which I can on, on this uh, K3 by hitting the receive antenna button. Um, you hook up the coax to the, the preamp in and out of the transceiver, and then it never is transmitted through the MFJ1026. This is hooked up just like a, a preamp um, that is coming through a pre-in here. Um, that's nice because you don't have to worry about transmit receive. Um, uh, the relays, you don't have to worry about putting too much power here, you don't have to worry about uh, SWR considerations. Uh, the manual does say that this can handle a maximum SWR of 2 to 1. You don't have to worry about any of that. So now let's take a look at how to use this device. Uh, 
I've tuned up the transceiver on a 40 meter station here and you can hear I'm getting quite a bit of background noise. Sounds like a motorboat. Um, I think this is coming from a neighbor's plasma TV or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't been able to track it down yet. And so first what I'll do is I'll do a quick demonstration. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the MFJ 1026 in line right now and activate it. I've already pre-adjusted the settings so it should kick the noise, the motorboat noise, um, as soon out of the uh, out of the um, speakers as soon as I hit the button. So So you can see it pretty effectively got rid of uh, most, if not of all, of that motorboat uh, noise. Um, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but I actually do have the noise reduction turned on in the K3. It's just this noise is too much for it. Um, I could activate the noise blanker, which would help get rid of quite a bit of it as well. But I can tell you from experience in dealing with this noise that even the noise blanker in this rig is not able to suppress all of that without severe distortion to the, to the received uh, transmission. So now let's talk about how we uh, use the controls on here. I'm going to turn this back up a little bit so we can hear it. And the 1026 is in line. The way you do this is first turn down the gain on the auxiliary antenna all the way off. Okay. Now, if the frequency you're using is above 7 megahertz, you switch this frequency to high. If it's below 7 megahertz, you switch it to low. Around 7 megahertz on 40 meters, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, either one seems to work. This unit has a preamp. They do sell a, a model 1025 that does not have the preamp. Uh, for the extra few dollars with the preamp, I found that this really does make a big difference. In order for this device to work, it has to be able to hear the noise, noise source on the auxiliary antenna, and that's where the preamp comes into play often. So go back to how, to how to get this thing to null out that noise. Turn the auxiliary antenna all the way down. Make sure the main antenna, your main receive antenna is all the way up. Observe the reading on the, on the S meter of your radio. You can see here it's almost S20 fluttering right up maybe against the S20 on, on the worst peaks. Make a note of that. Now turn the main antenna all the way down. Okay. Now turn the auxiliary antenna up until you have a same S meter reading or as close as you can get to it. It looks to me like it's right about where it was. Now we turn this main antenna back up and ideally the S meter should fluctuate just a little bit higher than, um, than it was before so I might have turned the auxiliary gain up a little bit too high. Now what we do is we adjust this phase until we can get rid of the noise. And I'll be quiet now so you can hear it. There's a spot right there where it's gone. See if I turn it too far, it comes back. Right there, the noise is gone. Sometimes if you're not able to do it in the first pass, you have to press this phase invert. Uh, actually have it have it out right now. Uh, you run through the pass. If it doesn't get it, you flip this the other way and try it. Usually one way or the other, um, it'll, it'll null that noise out. Uh, sometimes um, if you don't get the gain set exactly right, you have to adjust it. Remember, if you have this gain too low, it won't be able to, to null it out. So whichever one, when you made your adjustments that is lower, um, just tweak it up or down a little bit and then uh, go run through your phase adjustment again and you'll get it. So you can see what, how powerful of a, of a tool that can really be um, with a strong noise like that. Almost being able to get rid of uh, most if not all of it is uh, really pretty effective. In some cases I found that even when this device couldn't get rid of all of it, 
um, it got rid of so much of it that the rig's uh, noise reduction or noise blanker could easily handle the rest of it. Um, the other thing I'll mention is the manual does state for the best use case scenario is when both your auxiliary antenna and your main antenna are polarized in the same direction. Uh, I actually don't have that. I'm using an inverted V for my main antenna about 42 feet off of the ground. And this is like I mentioned earlier, just a loop that's about uh, 12, 15 feet off the ground and an 80 meter uh, loop fed with small parallel uh, wire. Uh, so there you have it folks. You can see that uh, adding a device like this, if you live in a crowded city, uh, which I do, where it's very hard to get rid of a lot of the noise sources, something like this can be an invaluable tool and, and really uh, make uh, ham radio fun again if, if you've got a headache just dealing with so much noise. Uh, this has been Tim Tucker. Uh, AE6LX for the Worldwide Radio Forum. Please visit us, visit us at www.worldwidedx for many other ham radio videos, articles, how-tos, and, and uh, everything about the radio hobbies.